Hello, my name is Petros Theodoru. I am a psychotherapist and a writer. I live in Thessaloniki, Greece, but I work also in Europe. Uh, this uh, presentation was realized for the first time at uh, the 3rd of April and uh, under the framework of the City College in Thessaloniki as an uh, online uh, presentation and uh, because it found a vivid response I decided to do it again as an uh, independent uh, video presentation and upload it to my web page and Facebook, YouTube, etc. So, uh, why the title of the presentation? Uh, these days of uh, really threat and isolation, a lot of uh, messages are in Facebook and in Internet, a lot of videos of support, most of the times, beautiful and effective support. I thought that uh, maybe uh, a look go, uh, on the, some deeper levels, according to my approach, of uh, what is happening in our days, maybe it would uh, be helpful for someone to be able to, to choose, to navigate uh, between all, uh, these information, all this information that uh, uh, is now uh, literally boiling in uh, in internet. And maybe some, uh, some, someone might get, might get also some um, tips, ideas, let's say, about uh, what is happening and uh, how to cope with it. Not exactly as instructions or uh, counseling on what to do, uh, just as ideas, as orientation and a way of thinking. So, first of all, in the first part of this presentation, uh, there will be some time dedicated on uh, defining what is the relational self. The second part would be, uh, will be on uh, uh, what is happening to the, what we call self in our days. And in the third part, uh, there will be some uh, possible orientations on uh, how to apply the ideas in the second and first part of the presentation in our everyday life, on practical levels of our everyday life. So now, um, relational self. Let's see this picture. It's by Joseph Zinker, a Gestalt therapist, the basic idea. And let's assume that uh, uh, this inside the circle is an individual defining it's a kind of me space, let's say, inside. An individual that can say I am and around is what this individual does not uh, define or perceive as me and it's the environment let's say. Till now the, the self was very uh, uh, of, not now I mean the, till, till some decades ago the concept of self was often perceived as a kind of um, uh, invisible substance existing in maybe another dimension, I don't know, that simply inhabits our brain, lives in our brain, and sees the world and the reality through the sockets of our eyes. Besides, this was also the famous uh, dualism, uh, body-mind, which is uh, the boss and which is the slave and so on. Uh, however, uh, among the many, many approaches of this idea of uh, self uh, came up in our times the, this idea of a relational self. And to understand it, let's see here. This individual, as we said just before, reacts constantly with the environment. And the self is actually a product of the interactions of the individual, the relational self, and it is a self that is formed, synthesized in praxis, in live interaction, in everyday life. So actually, the self happen, happens actually here, in this ring. For example, this individual reacts with the environment in this situation. And a self, an aspect of self is produced and let's say that this is a kind of brave. Now the situation here 
demands from me to be brave, let's say. So here emerges the brave aspect of the self of this individual. Here, let's be the fearful, let's put the, yes, the fearful aspect of this individual. It's a new situation and demands this aspect to come out. The same, you can put any kind of polarities you want here. It can be, for example, the, uh, the logical self, the rational self, the more spontaneous, the fluid self, um, wh wh whatever, whatever polarities. This idea of relational self, it's a principal, fundamental idea in uh, Gestalt therapy, in which I'm also trained. And um, uh, apart from that, it does not exist only in Gestalt therapy. It's a, a major conception of the word self in our days, the relational self. So actually, the self happens. It's not that the self exists in somewhere else. Uh, the, the self uh, is a product of our being in the world. It's a product of our interactions with the world. And uh, at any moment we can, uh, we can call in action because we need different aspects of self. Let's say this is our potential. Of course, it's infinite the possibilities because its little point may represent a different uh, situation of interaction with the environment, so a different aspect of self will emerge. And uh, this is very important because in this way the self, it's, it's a kind of function that characterizes both the individual as well as the, uh, the environment, the, the individual's um, field of life. It's a product, actually, of the field uh, in which the individual exists. It, it's not something um, that it's uh, not changing, uh, existing the same all the time. The self is, uh, uh, is uh, the relational self is a self uh, that is in practice, in action all the time, and changing, renewed, renewed again and again and again. However, in, uh, in order to get better this idea, let's make now a little bit, a little shift to, to another approach about uh, our existence and uh, to understand better this, this uh, concept of the relational self. What we know today is that if we imagine a human being as a kind of a factory or building, let's say, you can see it here okay and uh, if we imagine this person like that we know today from neurobiology also we have a lot of data on this supporting these ideas that the logical co uh, part of our not logical the the mental part of our of, of our being uh, it's only about 12 percent it's the space the place where happens the the, the higher, amazing, miraculous mental functions of, uh, of our beings, uh, and there lives our consciousness, our ability to say, I am me, Petros, I understand, I can observe myself, I can observe my feelings, I can observe my body, my thoughts, and so on. All this is very, very complex functions happening higher on the last floors of this building, of this factory. However, in the other, in the rest here down, uh, it's the 88% of uh, our being, which is just body, senses, and feelings, emotions. And it's the most important uh, detail we must remember is that this part is not conscious. It cannot be seen by our mind. It cannot be observed, it cannot be um, understood mentally as we understand something, uh, hidden code or whatever. Uh, we, it can be only, the, we can only sense the energy coming from down there. Uh, se uh, nuances of emotions, of feelings, of some uh, not, not so much 
clear moods and so on. So the, 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 important, the importance of this approach uh, is that, ah, I must say that uh, it's not exactly this space, the Freudian unconscious. It's, it's a huge theoretical discussion. I don't want to enter this with now. Let's say simply that this part is non-conscious. It's not, a, it, it cannot be observed by our mental part. It, it's not possible. However, wh how the experience happens now? We've got stimuli coming from external reality that they are taken by uh, the, by, uh, the gates of our senses and uh, they enter in the low level of our being. Here they get processed and processed and processed and processed and processed and sometimes they get up and they appear in our consciousness. So when I say, oh, you know, here it's, I don't like it so much, I don't feel so good now, for X reasons, um, it's not that uh, uh, it's just an idea that popped up like that. It's a huge elaboration, uh, in numerous uh, complex uh, processes that happened non-consciously before I can say consciously that here, you know, I feel not so good, I feel bad or, or very good how happy I am now. So the stimuli may come from our from external environment or from imagination also because if I start thinking of something I produce stimuli to my being uh, because we can experience can is produced either by external stimuli or by let's say uh, imagination imagination or uh, um, inner stimulation let's say so um, the important thing is that the our being, our everyday being, it's a kind of circle like that. Come a stimulus, get processed, processed, higher levels, appears in my consciousness. I have, I give some meaning, I have some uh, complex feelings about it, I, and then according to the meaning, I act to reality. And by acting to reality, I move, I change situation, I change position, new stimuli come and it's a circle always coming like, like that. It's a, a kind of spiral to be more more precise coming up because if uh, it was like this and the time was here it would be like that, this circle going. The, the important is it's like uh, having a, it's like having a, an elevator going up and down, up and down, taking primary raw material and bridging it up and then again down and then all this endlessly going and this is our uh, our non-stop experiential flow that builds uh, our life let's say our everyday life um, now keeping in mind that i go back to the first diagram scan i draw it by hand this, because here where I am, I don't have the possibility to do more complex things during these days. So, here we see a kind of black space. It's this space, uh, I use the, um, the, the, the Jungian term shadow to describe it. Uh, of course, I mean it in my own way, I elaborate it much. It's uh, the title of my second book, which exists also in English, it is translated in English. Shadow is a kind of um, a special area of our non-conscious part. For example, here, the shadow is these, like, let's say, black spots, black areas here, here. It's not all our non-unconscious. It's not all of it. It's some parts of it. And here inside, we, from the day we are born until the day we die, we, in a way, store experiences, feelings, uh, and a, a lot of material that um, it's threatening for us, it's bad, it's no, we cannot deal with it, we cannot cope with it, and we put it in there. It's like a storage place for us. 
for example, if a child needs to be taken care of, needs tenderness and the warmth, and instead of that gets uh, violence or feels invisible, the, the need and the feelings that are created by that situation, because it might be very threatening for the child, they are accumulated in the shadow. The same happens for many reasons during all, all our lives. The important thing is that our aspects of self that are here, covered by the shadow, are not accessible when we need them. It's like as if they do not exist. For example, if here is my, as I said before, my brave self, let's say, I can be very risky in my interactions. But if here is my self that sometimes feels uh, desperate, small, shrinks, wants to take some consolation, wants to cry, to surrender in a, um, in, a, in, a, in a sorrow or whatever, this individual can never become this. It's forbidden to become this. It's into the shadow. Why? Because maybe, let's say, for many reasons, as for example only, maybe sometime in, in the life of this individual, when he expressed or she expressed uh, such feelings of fear or not, the, the need for consolation or whatever uh, was not met uh, by the environment. So in order to go on to survive, this, this individual stored into the shadow these, um, uh, this aspect of self, which had to do by being afraid and asking for protection and so on. The same can be here in anger, for example. Somebody who learned that if I express my anger it's not good for any reason, he pushes the anger inside. And here can be a very well-adjusted person, a perfect, perfect citizen, and here it can be a very angry, angry individual. It's, it's blocked areas. They do not participate in our awareness, the shadow. So this is the, a very basic, basic and quick explanation, approach, let's say, of the, of the relational of the relational self. Uh, it's important to understand that when as one aspect of self emerges, the next aspect, the next situation in life, if time is this, okay, uh, it's not like switching something on, off. We need some time from one situation to do, to act, to interact, then the experience goes down and then comes the next aspect of self. And then again, this it's like a wave. In Gestalt therapy, there is a beautiful shape describing it. We don't have time to do this. What happens now? Now we enter the second part of uh, the presentation. What happens today? Today, we are all experiencing an, a, a very sudden threat that came, and also an isolation. We cannot fight with it, we cannot flight, uh, we cannot go away, the classical, let's say, reactions, basic reactions to a threat, fight with it or flight, go away from it. We can do either, so we freeze, we stay in one position, which is symbolically very well represented by the lockdown and the isolation in our homes, this freezing. However, biologists know that animals that uh, freeze, because there are some animals that use this strategy to survive when there is a hole flying and the animal goes down on the earth to pretend that he's dead, the corpse. So when the hawk passes, the animal gets up and because the they body responses, which are where the, the stress, the, the fear that had the animal by the threat, by the hope passing, were already produced, produced, the animal does something. The animal moves the body, moves the body like that, trembles, so that the accumulated energy, emotional energy, goes away. Today, we cannot do it. We are still in the freezing inside. But energy is being produced, of course. So 
we have a lot of a lot of energy primary energy it's our primary responses to threat this a lot of, of feelings coming up all the time but there are no channels to to express it to give it away so we have to in a way to retroflect it as we say in gestalt therapy to to turn it back okay we can uh, do fitness at home we can cook we can run from one room to the other i don't know whatever we can do many things but still still the energy remains because we cannot make new effective contacts with the environment it's the same motive isolated take care isolated take care and a lot of things it was something sudden we were not asked to do it uh, for all this and uh, we cannot understand even the nature of uh, the threat and so on so we have some basic primary responses to the situation of uh, this virus th threat and not only to this threat but also the threat of what is the tsunami coming afterwards the crisis the economic crisis how things will be people we are all thinking we're all afraid we doubt what will happen uh, a lot of questions of identity may emerge come up who i will be later how things will be how can i define even myself later apart from huge practical problems about jobs professions and so on anyway this is a kind of boiling thing a kind of turbulence huge turbulence coming and uh, that came already and we cannot uh, react to this sometimes so we uh, we uh, enclose a lot of these feelings in the shadow or the situation here uh, makes tremble the, our boundaries with the shadow and it's even here a storm maybe we need to call an aspect of self that is already into the shadow for example about the individual that uh, about the, um, the fear we were talking it's logical very very natural to be afraid in this situation we are experiencing but if i have learned that it's no good to be afraid and uh, i was always a strong um, a strong man commanding other people and stepping here and there now i cannot permit my fear to emerge and this creates a lot of pressure to the shadow because my aspect of self that could be afraid is inside here so we speak about primary turbulences primary feelings instinctive responses coming up uh, you may say someone might say but what are you saying Petros? in everyday life we are afraid we are angry and so on no i don't speak about this quality and this scale of feelings it's not i am angry because uh, i didn't get in facebook much likes or because my selfie is not good to put it in on the to mount to upload it on uh, instagram we speak about a huge huge turbulence because we all feel that we risk to be annihilated as beings not only because you will catch the the virus or not this is a fear but it's a part only it's because our our connections our coordinates with reality are changing so we feel a little bit hanging in nowhere so we speak about strong feelings primary feelings the all, all these here i show to you this flow of experience is not anymore harmonic it's um, it's going up and down it's interrupted 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 it goes up and down up and down and so it's like um, a car going on a street that it's not asphalt it's not smooth and goes all the time like that uh, and then we have a lot of uh, mood changes mood alterations we we feel now we feel this then after a few minutes we feel that we change it's not smooth the change of one aspect of self to the other comes one aspect of self fighting the other it's anyway 
a big thing happening if we are even when we don't we are not aware about it it's happening because it's normal to happen inside of us of every hu human being let's uh, let's say so we we our responses are very often automatic now we, we don't have time to organize to 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 build our responses to reality to what's uh, to what's happening and um, we cannot we cannot organize and program and become aware effectively aware and i mean of what's happening into us of what we have to do and so on so this is why we've got a lot a lot a lot a lot of um, automatic also reactions like overeating alcohol or drugs or total depression and then an energy that comes up and then enthusiasm it's like a little bit some manic situation it's like a kind of a little bit of by let's say bipolar uh, response uh, because it's uncontrollable strong emotions and primary emotions coming up so our responses are not at all harmonic and um, uh, we may also go to humor is very good in these situations but to do just humor it's not good as it is not functional i mean as it is not functional if we are just crying all day and what we do and uh, we are desperate desolated and uh, so on because anyway the accumulated energy we keep inside sometimes needs to find ways to go out it's uh, like um, uh, a colleague of mine, Pavlos Kutrufinis, he gave, he lives in Napoli, and he gave a nice picture like um, a fluid in a tube that is connected with other tubes. And if the pressure of the liquid, of the fluid into the tube is very big, the fluid will find its way to get out from the points of connection with other tubes. Some drops will start emerging. The pressure there may break even uh, the articulation of the tube with other tubes and so on. So the energy coming out, it creates a kind of violently creates this energy in our, um, let's say, harmonic sense of being. No matter how much harmonious one was feeling before. We speak here of uh, literally a, a very stormy turbulence a very big turbulence coming up so sometimes we don't know uh, we cannot define who we are we can sometimes we feel strangers in our own being now and uh, we like uh, lost in darkness and we don't know where to move where to go no orientation uh, no clear direction and uh, we don't know how to to, to understand, to, to perceive, to become aware of our needs and of our, um, how to, what to do, of our strategies to, to meet our needs. We cannot build them as we were used to do it, no matter how effective it was before the virus time. Now let's go to the third part of our presentation. some ideas on uh, uh, what, to, what, what to do. It's not counseling or advices by a specialist. No, not like this. It's some natural things that come up if we put together all what I said before. First of all, um, according, somebody else might, may put all this together in a different way. Me, I do it in this way now. Uh, first of all, I think that it is uh, very important to, to understand that to allow what's happening in us, to allow, it's very normal, very, very normal to be afraid. It's absolutely normal. It's very, it's very bad sign if somebody cannot feel fear in this situation at all, I mean. It's natural to be angry. It's natural sometimes to feel desperate or 
to feel uh, yeah to, f to to feel a kind of injustice in all this why this happens uh, this is because as i said here we've got a very complex mental part and here a very spontaneous emotional part uh, which is better or which is more true no that's the question has no meaning they are both true if a beloved person steps on my foot and that before i understand that ah it's you my dear take care please don't step on my foot again it's painful before that i feel a, a burst an urge of instinctive reaction coming out from my non-conscious part which is more true both of them and I have to find ways to combine. So, uh, in, in order, um, this is why I mention a lot of feelings, um, anger or even injustice. Somebody can say, why do you feel injustice? Life does not take care of you. Life can bring anything. No, maybe in our non-conscious parts down there, maybe we feel that life should protect us. It's not the logical part only. And the, the answer, don't be afraid, don't be angry, don't be desperate. You understand? It's totally useless, absolutely useless. Why? Because we know today that feelings have a bodily origin. This means that something happens in our bodies, some substances are produced, and we have feelings. So when we say somebody, don't be afraid, it's uh, nonsense because the substance is produced in the body so we must basically support this person in finding some ways to do something with the fear or the anger and don't say don't be don't be is not the best suggestion in our days however it's very important to allow whatever feeling emerges no matter if it is complex logical paranoid schizoid, whatever, primitive or not, because it's very normal to have these feelings. The second part is to attempt a little bit to contain. Allow means to contain. This means to, to a little bit to try to orchestrate what's happening in us. Now I have a mood, I want to eat or whatever, three pizzas, my mind says, stop, Petros, you've got already at least five kilos in these days, but it's a, it's a fight and I say, eat or not to eat, this is not the best reaction to do, because as I said, it's smooth, the passing from one situation to the other, so at that moment, let's just, a little bit, if I just stay with me, not much, a few seconds, to try to and to, to sense, to feel that one part of me needs uh, desperately to eat three pizzas more, and one part of me says, okay, this is not good. It's not good what you're doing. Don't, I don't have to take, to take um, a kind of result to say, okay, so it's you that you're right. The other is wrong. No, both are right. Both are connect, and I have... To, to, how can I say, to contain both of them and also to, to try to understand the, the, the smoothness of my aspects of self, of self emerging. One aspect of self wants to rush to the frigo, the other aspect of self says, no, no, don't do it, don't do it. And it's a battle. I have to make a little bit more smooth the conversation of these aspects of self. This means just to stay a little bit practically inactive and concentrate basically on my body. Not to do complex meditations or whatever. No, 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 no. Just a few seconds. Stay, stay a little bit with myself may help me to contain what's happening, all the contradictory urges and uh, needs that emerging at that time in myself. A third, a third uh, uh, part is to integrate my polarities. It's very similar to the, to the previous part, to integrate polarities, to, 
to integrate the different parts. Integrate polarities means integrate literally bipolar things. For example, I want to do fitness, I prepare, and when I start fitness, I want to fall down, sleep, and watch an amazing new uh, new show in the, in the internet or whatever. It's the same idea to contain, but with polarities is a little bit more hard to do it because it's extreme, so the tension is bigger. Uh, in these days, uh, I think I'll do one video especially dedicated on this, how to contain polarities. But here the idea is also to stop a little bit and imagine our uh, two, two, um, two aspects of self, the contrary ones coming up. And maybe even one of such aspects is in the shadow coming here and pressing to emerge. So it's not so easy as it sounds because maybe there may be a reaction that I'm not used to permit to myself in normal, let's say, normal situations of everyday life before the virus crisis. Now, um, integrate polarities. Now, another thing is uh, um, some people say that I want to go I look always the album of past photos and so on. Um, other people and uh, people say I want to see only to imagine myself in the future and so on. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. Both are okay to do. First of all, going to the past now that we, our present is trembling so much. It's an earthquake. Um, it's a very good support because going to the past, I re-establish a line of continuity. I get in contact, in touch with my the continuum of my life, of my being, and this stability makes me here uh, feel some kind of support. It's like standing somewhere, It's the ground starts trembling and I immediately try to grasp from something. The same is for the future, projections of imagination to the future. However, uh, we must take care here because uh, it, this cannot substitute the present. No matter no past, how no matter how helpful it might be, or no future, also no matter how helpful it can be and supportive for us, should substitute the present. Because this is why I have arrows here going to past, going to the future, because. Anyway, our life happens in here and now, in the present. And we need ourselves to be well grounded in the present. Uh, so we need him to act. We don't need to evaporate into bubbles of past or of future projections of us. Another thing is um, that we have to make some basic acceptances. To accept some basic things, some basic givens of this reality now. First of all, it's that anyway there will be some loss. Anyway, it's not possible to, uh, and it's not helpful to think that when all this ends, I'll try to fill the gaps created now. No. There is trauma now, there is uh, things that we are losing every time. It can be moments of life, it can be moments of calmness or whatever. It can be um, expectations for my future or some plans that I had, professional or whatever, in education, in relationships. Imagine how people, how many people were planning to get married or to do things or to open a new job. To start a new job, job, etc., etc. So it's not easy to to um, to lose our grasp to, to to our expectations because our expectations it's a part of us. However, we are going to lose any way something, and it's okay. It's like the traumas we had in life. A, a big trauma 
cannot be uh, another colleague, Katia Hajilaku, she was also my trainer in Gestalt Foundation in Thessaloniki. Um, she said this, I liked it very much, that a past trauma, it's like a hood that remains on our skin and it will never be, again, a smooth, a baby skin, let's say, very smooth, as like, as if nothing had happened. No, something happened. There will be a kind of scratch, there will be some, this reparative tissue over it, which sometimes may, when it's cold outside, may be painful or maybe itching a little bit or whatever. It's okay. We go on in life like this. And in this period, we are definitely going to lose something. It's not that um, the same structures will be the same ever again. Even if the shape is looks like, again, the same, the meaning will be different. I don't know which one will be for each one of us. We'll see. But it will be different anyway. It's enough to think that anyway, moment from moment, has got a different meaning for us, even if we're doing the exactly the same things. So we're going to lose something and it is okay to lose something. Now I had an idea from, let's take, let's have a look. It came to me now, the idea. I remember that I have a kind of shape here. It's in my book, The Shadow, from, but it's in Greek, the Greek version, Never mind. The, the diagram, it's important. So the, the second part in our basic acceptances is that there is no need, no need to correct anything, no need to re-establish anything. It's not necessary. It looks like the other one, but the other one, the first one I said, I said about the loss has to do with the emotional response. Here it has to do with um, also practical things, practical movements in life. Let's take this individual here who was living his, her life in this way. A normal possible continuation of, the la of this individual's life would be this, but happens a very boof, sudden uh, thing happens in the life event and the practical life of this person goes down. So it's useless of this person to think that I'm going to repair, to recover. I lost a little bit the normal part of my life, which it would be if this have not happened, but I'm going to find it again. No, never. It's not possible because this is the continuation. And for life, there are both, both possibilities are normal and okay. For us, this is maybe bad and we get lost in dreaming the good. It's only our human mind working like that. For life, the before virus situation, even the virus situation, even if it was a kind of science fiction in Mad Max post-apocalyptic realities, it's very normal, all is normal for us people because we give meaning to things. So according to the meanings we give, we feel that we lost the normal line of our lives. Imagine what happened with the economical crisis 10 years ago, 12 years ago. Many people were thinking for five, for six years, for seven years, how to reestablish this, how to correct the wrong deviation of their lives. No, it's not. This literally ties up our hands because we are lost in, in practical thinking, that uh, we are spending energy for something imaginative and we lose our grounding to the here and now, which could be very helpful to, to plan, to do realistic plans in our here and now. So, now, the need of the other. We, we must accept that we need the others in this situation. But how? We don't need the others as a canvas on which to project our, uh, um, uh, or to express what we feel. I need you to express my anger. I need you to express my need for hug. Please hug me, and so on. Not like this, because we need it, as we say in Gestalt, in a more dialog dialogical way, by Martin Buber, existential dialogue. We need the others 
in the sense of a deeper bond, of a deeper connection. And I don't mean at all like this, a metaphysical, uh, let's say, or spiritual approach. We know that, okay, you are all made by quantum fields. Okay, and this is a kind of interconnectivity. But for me, personal, personally, only for me, uh, this is useless for my everyday life because this happens on a quantum level, on my conscious level. I am who I am and I perceive things differently than quantum levels. So this is why I exclude totally this metaphysical, spiritual approach on how to feel the interconnectivity. It exists, this interconnectivity, but on quantum level, let's say. But at the same time, we need the, the other as a human being grounded in a reality that we share every day together. So we need basically the I-U relationship, the allergical relationship. We need bonds. We need to take care of the other, to care for the others, not to use the others on any level it can be. And the other thing is the responsibility that this that happens, it's not my responsibility, but also it's, let's say, no one's responsibility. It's an event of life. It happens. And, uh, okay, it's a lot of uh, uh, authorities in different countries. They do it in different ways. They try to pass the responsibility to the citizens. You were bad boys. This is why the virus came. Uh, then the citizens try to accuse you were bad parents because you were not prepared for this. It's useless. This may exist such a kind of fight, but it's totally another level. What I speak about is that existentially we are not responsible for what's happening as well as we are not responsible for our feelings and for our needs because they are produced feelings and needs on a non-conscious levels and events are produced on a scale much bigger than us. However, for events, for feelings and needs, maybe we are not responsible for their production, uh, but we are responsible what to do with them, how to respond to events and what to do with our needs and our feelings. In this sense, we don't. it's useless to find um, the black sheep, somebody to accuse about what happened. It's totally useless, this. A another thing that we could do is how to manage some feelings of, uh, of uh, anger and fear or whatever feeling. It was actually a question that came in the first version of this uh, presentation at the City College of Thessaloniki. And I, I want to include it here also in this presentation. Um, what to do when I have feelings uh, of fear, let's say. How to deal with fear was the, the answer. So uh, it's feelings management, let's say. For me, there are three steps. It's to accept that we already said this, to accept that any feeling, it's okay to have it. Second is to know it, to get to know this feeling, this means to stay with it, not I'm afraid, I feel afraid. Stay with the fear. It's also a Gestalt therapy expression, this. Stay with it. Stay with your fear uh, or your anger, whatever. Breathe with it. Take it, hug it, stay with it. It's part of you. And the, I, I also intend to make a video on this, how to know to each other, how to get introduced to a short video to some feelings. And the third step is the boundaries. There was not much space. I wrote it very quickly today. This Here they are. The three ways feelings management. Again, okay. accept, know, and boundaries. Boundaries means that I, I respect this aspect of self coming up, but I don't identify totally forever with it. It's like a child. A child, we say, you can say to a child, Okay, now you ate fourth ice cream, ice creams, you stayed three hours later from your normal time of going to bed, um, you listened uh, uh, six fairy tales instead of two every day, now finish, now go to sleep. So, 
it, it's not question to fight our feelings. It's question to accept, to know, and to make, to put some boundaries in our identification with them. Okay, now I feel sad. I feel, let's say, fear or whatever. But I need to do my job. I need to do something in my present here, in my present. I need to do something in my present. So, Antonia Costantinidou has said it. It's also a psychotherapist, colleague and trainer of mine in uh, Gestalt Foundation. She had said to make some uh, discussion, some dealing, some agreement with this uh, aspect of self. L like, okay, now I am afraid. I know. Stay a little bit behind. Let me do what I have to do now. And I promise to you that in the evening I'll visit you again. This means if I want to cry or whatever, uh, now I do my job and I'll cry <laughs> later, let's say. But we must, if we make an agreement with such an aspect of self, we must, we must honor it, we must do it. Because otherwise, like children, remember, never forget, this aspect of self will be much repressed with a lot of unpleasant results. And final, final point is, let's say it's a big thing, this maybe I'll do also another video about it. I don't know for whatever you could do videos in this period. It's unreaching awareness. Now, the difference, it's very important to understand the difference between consciousness and awareness. In Gestalt therapy, Consciousness is here, up, not only in Gestalt therapy. Consciousness is a, a higher mental uh, activity, function, that it's here, up. It's very complex, very complex thing, an enormous, a miraculous gift we have from evolution, this uh, the ability to think, to become conscious of. But it's basically mental because it's it needs our mind, our ability to think, to develop consciousness. However, it's not a question to become conscious of what's happening to me, but to become aware of. Aware of embraces, awareness uh, embraces uh, also um, uh, consciousness, feelings, and senses. It's the totality of our body, of our being. So when I say to reach awareness, I mean on all three levels. Mind here, sorry, here to unreach all three levels. Mind, body, okay, senses, feelings. All these levels, awareness. Uh, there are some in this final step, final way of, I mean, suggestion of thinking in this situation is, first of all, it's very, I found it very useful for me. Sometimes in the day, to stop a little bit and just very quickly, not through complex analysis, as I told you, or meditation or whatever, to say just how I am, how I am on all these levels. What are my thoughts? What's happening? What are my feelings? What's happening with my body? And which is the total snapshot out of it? A second question uh, that I found very useful to me, the first is how? The second one is, do I really uh, want to be now here or doing what I'm doing? It's the second. But this is a very tricky question because we must respond on two levels. One is our higher mental level and the other the guts level. Actually, we must respond by respecting what our mind says but also what the energy coming from down there, from our guts, says to. So if I say that now I want to go, what I want now? I want to go out and, I don't know, do whatever. And the mind says, this is my wish there. And the mind says, uh, no, you cannot because it's the rules of lockdown and uh, so on. Which is true. Both are true. What I have to do is to try and see guts and mind as a whole, as one thing, as a unity, as a wholeness, and take the overall, the overall essence, the overall sense, overall sense of what is emerging in me now. 
third step is that, okay, I feel like that now, but it will be very helpful if I ask myself, uh, I have to ground in this situation. For example, uh, it's like, as I say, um, I would like to, uh, to have wings to fly, or I would like to have money. This is not awareness. This is wishful thinking which is, can be very, very, very risky. Because in wishful thinking, we just express a wish that if the world would be different, I would like the world to be different. So it's very important to include awareness in a very concrete situation on our here and now. So as a complementary question of do I want to be here, guts and mind, comes to ground all this on a concrete situation of my here and now. What's happening now in this room, in this time of the day? I don't say now in this period of, lo of lockdown. I speak very precisely of now, now, now. And two more last questions that may be useful are what... Uh, uh, what I uh, actually what I need now what I need to to find support in all this in all this awareness I'm having and the last one is what can I do finally I am aware of, of all this I said before of how I am in all levels if I do want to be here or not I'm grounded on the situation of here and now uh, a need for my support emerges. I would like somebody to hug me now to feel okay or whatever. Uh, and I want, but there is, uh, I can have it. The situation is that I can have it only through the screen or the telephone. I'm grounded or all. And finally, what can I do? And what I'm ready to do in the very, 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 very end in this moment I am. This five steps exercise me helped me a little bit. I found it out of practice. So I tried to organize it like that and it's just a suggestion. It's not a golden thing. It's not that psychologists say. No, experience say of everyday experience and actually it's an application of what we said in the first two parts of this presentation. So this is the end. Uh, time goes on. Um, Things move, things change. We live in a universe of uh, non-stop transformations. We change with it. So it's... And if we think that we, we give meaning to things, it's our... Me, attributing meaning to events and reality, it's our task. We do it. Nobody does it for us. These things we said today, I hope, maybe, they will support you in finding your way to give meaning to what's happening in this period of threat and isolation. Now, if anybody is um, interested, let me find a little bit. Okay. Here is my, um, um, my email. Also, I've got a Facebook the page that it is only in English. It's here written. And down there, it's also my personal website where I upload many things, texts, videos, like this. Not systematically, but it's a lot of material already inside there. And uh, I show it like this. I did it in the lecture because I don't think that I have time or wish to get a very an excellent video with uh, menus popping up and so on. In normal periods, I like very much doing it. But I know, I feel myself now, that I will not do it. So uh, this is why I'm using the same material <laughs> uh, that I used in the original presentation of this, um, of this lecture, of this thing. Um, also, I intend to do, to organize some um, uh, um, activity that it's I call it um, um, uh, share dots I'll call it moments of sharing which means 
short live videos, short live videos where I just introduce two, three minutes a topic and who is inside may ask or discuss or share something. I, I, I will announce it in my fa Facebook uh, page, this. So who my, is interested in, in all this may follow this uh, page. I show it again. It's, oh, it's a new page and it's, it is uh, only in English, this Facebook page. Okay. Thank you very much for watching, for being with me. I know it's one hour, it's a long presentation. I thought to break it down in small videos, but who is going to see it one 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 together? We do it only with interesting shows in TV. So I decided to repeat exactly, almost exactly, because I improvise all the time, the first presentation in the City College of Thessaloniki. Thank you so much. Stay healthy, stay safe, and stay as much creative as it is possible in our times. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.